About 15 years ago, I was standing here, right in this very spot, and a monk from Thailand came in. Orange robes, beautiful orange robes. Orange you hardly ever see. It wasn't quite deglo, but it looked like sun was shining on it. That type of extraordinary reddish burning sun orange. And he had two young Americans with him. And he didn't speak English. And he was such a presence, he was such an extraordinary presence to be in this room. And all of the guests basically started to look at him. So I stopped the class for a second and I said to the young men, could you introduce and they introduced the monk and told us who the monk was. And I said, why have you come here? And he said, in 1964, he got the book, Be Your Own Doctor, by our founder, Ann Wigmore. And in 1964, alone, living in the forest, he became a 100% raw fooder. And as he came closer, and it was one of those bright summer days, and you could see the light. His face was smooth, like a baby skin. Smooth. And the joy again, it emanated from him at a level that was just exceptional. You know, someday I hope I have that. I have so much joy in my life, I don't have that much joy. 100% joy, this guy was. Pure joy. You can bottle this stuff. And even though he spoke very broken English, at best, that's probably a compliment more than he said. We sat him here in front of the room, and the guests gathered, and I asked the guests, including myself, we sat in front of him, and we allowed him to speak. And he spoke to us for about 40 minutes without stopping. And at first, of course, we Westerners were mumbling, what's he saying, you know, not understanding? And finally we said to them, be quiet, don't listen to the words. Do not listen to the words. Feel his intent. And as soon as people relax and shut what off? The shut the mind off. The mind is trained. It's sort of like a computer. We all say odd things. The computers are going to take over the world. How are they going to do that? You have to program a computer. And the mind is programmed in such a way that if you say, here's a way these sounds make images, we have a hard time creating images from where it really is important. The place that we want to get our images from is here, in the heart. And I saw the group transform. And his message was very, very simple. He said, I must have needed to be liberated at a greater level than my own efforts were bringing me. Let's go through those words again. I guess I needed to be liberated more than my own efforts were bringing. So even the great spiritual traditions, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, whatever it may be, it is still an effort that is locked into a physiology, a physicality about it. And so you still have structure. And when I took the food of love, that's what he called this. He never called it living food. He never called it raw food. He never called it anything that we, who are physically bound, would call it. Because we like to chew it and swallow it and measure it and count it and stick it out the baluchka. And <laughs> it was love food to him that I transformed. I transformed. And so at the end, we all asked questions, and we said, what do you mean by transform? He said, now I have complete ease when I think at the edge of my own imagination. Well, let's think of those words. Now I have complete ease when I think at the edge of my own imagination. Because imagination is everything. Imagination is the belief that we started with a few minutes ago. Belief in self. And if you believe widely, fully, and greatly, harmoniously in yourself, I assure you that you're going to have an imagination that is wide. So wide and so large, it can actually become endless. And most of us have to come to that joyous event called death before imagination becomes totally endless. 
But that was not nature and God's intent. We should have that endless imagination within life so that we really truly understand that life is perpetual. That there is no beginning, there is no end. And we can fuel ourselves with living food and loving thoughts and extraordinary relationships and events in our life. And that's what we're here to do. If you struggle and if you suffer at this point, it's a limitation in self-belief. Just remember that. This afternoon, my little boy said, Daddy and Mommy, we never do a lot of fun things. Let's go see a movie. And of course, we never look up what movie's playing. And a lot of you are anal. Look it up, what time you're going, let's get ready. We go, I never. I just show up in whatever movies at that time we see. Today we saw a wonderful movie called The Bucket. You know about this movie? How many of you saw The Bucket? I'm giving a movie review here. I want you to see it. The Bucket List, right? Yeah, The Bucket List. This was Jack Nicholson, one of the great, 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 and Morgan Fairchild, one of the great, great, great Fairchild. He's okay too. Incredible, incredible actors. And Anna Marie and I said the story was so simple that unless you had that level of imagination, and that's what great actors are, the actresses and actors that really capture us are those people that have this expansive imagination. Unless you had those type, that level, this simple story could never have worked. 